There are three models of the OH-58 helicopter used in the Army today. Two models, the A and C, are used primarily for observation. The latest version of the OH-58 is the DR model, and that will be addressed in another video. The OH-58 Alpha Charlie is an unarmed light observation helicopter, also known as the Kiowa Scout. Its primary missions range from aerial reconnaissance, general support, and counter-narcotics operations. The Kiowa Scout has a two-bladed main rotor and a two-bladed tail rotor system powered by a single gas turbine engine located aft of the pilot's seat above the avionics compartment. The total fuel capacity is 71.5 gallons of JP-8 held in one self-sealing fuel cell under the passenger seat in the rear compartment. The Army designates this aircraft as a single pilot aircraft. Under most circumstances, however, there will be a crew of two. Two additional passengers can be seated in the rear, bringing the total seating capacity to four. The pilot's compartment is called the crew station. When the terms right side and left side are used, assume the speaker is sitting in the crew station looking forward. Some common controls in the crew station are the collective, the cyclic, and the tail rotor pedals. The cabin is accessible through doors on both sides of the aircraft. In the event of an emergency, the crew station windows can easily be broken to access the crew station. That completes the orientation of the Kiowa. Now we'll discuss the emergency procedures for the OH-58 Alpha Charlie. When an aircraft mishap occurs, all emergency rescue personnel must be prepared to safely handle the call. These personnel include firefighters, emergency medical technicians, and local law enforcement officers. They must know the proper safety precautions and personal protective measures to successfully rescue the crew, protect the surrounding community, and safeguard our environment. The senior fire officer for this drill decided that 50 feet was sufficient distance from the aircraft to set up the staging area for the wounded. His assessment took into account not only the calm winds, but also the readily accessible roads and landing area for air evacuation. An aircraft crash can shatter the material into sharp, jagged particles. Fragments may be as small as a few microns wide and a fraction of an inch in length. Depending on the exact dimensions, these minute fibers can be inhaled and lodged in the nasal airways or the air passages in the lungs. Therefore, respiratory protection is required at all times. When handling composites, emergency responders must always wear appropriate protective clothing and equipment to avoid possible injury. Inhalation of toxic fumes produced by burning composite materials can cause headaches, burning eyes, vomiting, or even worse. During a fire, these composite particles can also damage your lungs. If possible, firefighters should ensure that no one is downwind of the fire. If the engine of an OH-58 is still running when you, the emergency responder, arrive, you must use extreme caution. The main rotor blades can dip as low as four feet above ground level in gusty winds or on sloping terrain. Warning, in the event skids are spread on a crash landing, rotor droop will be even lower. In addition, always avoid the tail rotor area. The tail rotor blades are close to the ground and nearly invisible when running. They become increasingly visible only as the engine is shutting down. Note, the blades can still be spinning even though they're contacting the ground and kicking up flying debris. When the emergency responder feels there is sufficient ground clearance to approach the aircraft safely, he will proceed to the crew station door. He should approach the front of the aircraft at a 45 degree angle and always keep the pilots in view. If the pilots are conscious, try to get a hand signal prior to approaching a running aircraft. Both crew station doors operate in the same way. If installed, the doors open outward with a simple door handle located on the center aft exterior of each door. Turn the handle downward to open. Once inside, you will see the yellow emergency release handles on the top forward hinge of the interior door frame. Pull the yellow jettison handle toward the rear of the aircraft to release the doors from their hinges. A thin safety wire is installed to keep the release handle from being inadvertently pulled and is designed to break easily as you purposely pull the handle to release the door. The jettison of these doors is not power assisted. If the door does not fall away when the handle is pulled, manually pull the door away from the aircraft. It may be necessary to break the plexiglass window in the door or the windscreen to get to the jettison handles. The window in the door is made of much thinner plexiglass and will be easier to break if necessary.
By the OH-58 operator's manual, an emergency shutdown is done in three steps. However, for firefighter training purposes, we're demonstrating a four-step emergency shutdown. First, shut off the engine by pressing and holding the idle release button located forward of the throttle on the pilot's collective and rotate the throttle toward the right side of the aircraft. Once you feel the throttle stop rotating, it will be in the off position. Second, pull the fuel shutoff valve aft to the off position. The fuel shutoff lever is set in a track on the forward right edge of the overhead console. Push it forward, then to the right, and finally to the rear. Remember, if the lever is not pushed forward and to the right first, it will not slide to the rear to shut off the fuel. Third, turn the battery switch to the off position. The battery switch is located in the overhead console on the front row and is a two-position toggle switch labeled BAT and OFF. With firefighter gloves and hoods on, individual switches may be hard to single out, so push all switches on the front row aft. The final step is to disconnect the battery, which is located on the left side in the compartment behind the passenger door. Disconnect the battery by rotating the quick disconnect counterclockwise and pulling it away from the battery. Before attempting to extricate the pilots, first ensure the pilot's collective is moved out of the way. Without hydraulic pressure, the flight controls may be stiff, but they can be moved. Warning, never pull a pilot from a running helicopter as you may snag the collective and cause further damage to everyone around. If time is critical, one emergency responder should hold the flight controls while another responder extracts the pilot. To remove the pilot, first disconnect his helmet cord by pulling the sections of the connector apart. Do not remove the pilot's helmet unless absolutely necessary. The pilot's seat belt is a four-point single release harness system with inertial reel, two shoulder harnesses and two lap belts joined in a single pull type latch. Remove the pilot's seat belt by pulling up on the release latch. You may need to cut the seat belt if it's jammed. Remove each belt and set aside out of the way. The restraint system found in the passenger compartment is also a four belt single latch system. During extraction, ensure the pilot's feet are free from tail rotor pedals or from metal that may have been torn during the crash. Once the pilot's feet are clear, he can then be removed and taken to the staging area for medical attention. Emergency responders will determine the appropriate use of a neck brace and backboard on a case-by-case -case basis. This concludes the OH-58 crash review procedures. Points in review are, one, normal access is through the front crew station doors. Two, all four doors can be jettisoned and are not power assisted. Three, both pilot's flight controls can be moved without hydraulic assist, but will be stiff. Four, the tail rotor and main rotor are very close to the ground. Five, Total fuel capacity is 71.5 gallons of JP-8. Six, personnel on board can range from one to four.